Hello and welcome to Good Drugs. I'm Michael Fiedler and I'm of the belief that in order to get through this thing called life, we need potions, elixirs, magic pills, and it's just a matter of finding good ones. And the good drug today is Aristata or Aripiprazole Laroxol and it's made by a company called Alchermes. So this drug is a long-acting injectable for schizophrenia. And the reason why long-acting injectables exist for schizophrenia is that it's a tricky condition. Um, you have a whole host of potential symptoms, which are classified as either positive or negative. There's also general symptoms, but positive symptoms are things like hallucinations. Negative symptoms are things like emotional withdrawal. Um, and schizophrenia is a really difficult condition. Um, there is a lot of what that's happening beneath the surface. It can uh, Relapses can lead to brain atrophy. These patients are... Um, really adversely affected and it's really tough and it shows up usually in your late teens and it's not an easy condition to treat. Um, and the first treatments that became available for schizophrenia popped up in the 1950s when what they call typical antipsychotics were first discovered. And typical antipsychotics really changed the way that um, uh, mental patients were treated and they did it were really innovative at the time. Um, and the, some of them are still used. One in particular is called um, Haldol, which I'll refer to later. But um, they have some tricky side effects, um, one of which is um, called um, extrapyramidal symptoms or essentially tremors or what's also called akathisia. And some of this can actually be permanent. And so they can actually affect you positively by really shutting down your symptoms and the person in general, which is what Haldol can can do it can make you really kind of mute and sort of sullen um, and closed off um, but it'll keep you from tearing up a Walmart uh, but it can have these really nasty side effects and so over time uh, new drugs were uh, uh, um, developed for treating um, various mental conditions like schizophrenia and those are called atypical antipsychotics which aeropiprazole is so it's a new class of molecules to treat uh, or a second class of molecules to treat um, antipsychotic conditions. And these don't have quite the same effect on those extrapyramidal symptoms. They don't cause the same degree of tremor that um, the typical antipsychotics do. Some of them can cause weight gain, and aeropiprazole itself has a boxed warning for use in older patients with dementia. It's not the only, Aristotle is not the only drug that has this box warning. There, are, um, Anything with aeropiprazole has that box warning. But by and large, the drug has a decent, um, efficacy and safety profile, aeropiprazole does. And it's used in a lot of different conditions outside of schizophrenia. Aeropiprazole is used in bipolar disorder, depression. Um, it's also used for agitation in autism spectrum disorder. So it's a pretty widely used drug that has um, that's effective, um, but it's not necessarily as hard-hitting as the typical antipsychotics used to be or are. And so I wanted to focus on this drug, Aristata, because I think it's a really interesting option out there uh, for schizophrenia. And the company that made it, Alchemies, is also a really interesting organization. A little more about Alchemies, the company, it was first started in 1987, so it's been around for quite some time. But traditionally, they're more of a technology manufacturing company, and they actually made things that supported drug delivery. Things like microspheres or the addition of what's called a fatty acid tail, this laroxyl on aeropiprazole that helps with delivery that allows it to be a long-acting injectable. And what's interesting is that Arist uh, Alchemies has had a number of molecules that have been um, that are on the market for schizophrenia, and some of them are even their competitors. Um, things like Risperidol Consta and Vega Sustena and Vega Trenza are things that they have supported with their technology that are used as long-acting injectables in schizophrenia. But around the 2010s, the early 2010s, they started to push for their own molecule. And what they wanted to do was combine what they knew about the um, antipsychotic market, which is that aripiprazole is a somewhat, essentially a trusted um, atypical antipsychotic, and sort of see what their technology could do with it. So sort of take ownership of their own molecule rather than just outsourcing their technology to others. And so they came up with this Aristata or Aeropiprazole Laroxyl. And the way that its long-acting injectable properties work um, is this Laroxyl tail is a, is a long fatty acid tail that is added to this Aeropiprazole molecule. And what that does to that Aeropiprazole molecule is it brings it out of solution. It's hard for it to dissolve. So what I mean by that is imagine a suspension of salad dressing, that oil and vinegar mixture and you get those big blebs, those big circles, those are the fat molecules that don't want to go into suspension. So adding this laroxyl tail to aripiprazole, which is soluble and given orally by itself, makes it harder for it to dissolve. And because it's harder for it to dissolve, it stays in your body longer. 
So essentially what you do is every month, or actually the, the dosing regimen for Aristot is a little complicated, but essentially once a month, they also have a six week dose and a two month dose. But once a month you get this intramuscular shot um, and you're good. And what happens is, is you insert lar these large um, particles of aripiprazole that slowly melt, like a huge block of ice that slowly melts and releases aripiprazole in a very controlled manner. And that laroxyl tail gets cut off by enzymes that are in your body called esterases. And that aripiprazole gets liberated to do its thing. And um, before I forget, the, the mechanism of action of aripiprazole, like a lot of antipsychotics, is not totally known, but it does um, interact with dopamine and serotonin receptors in both a agonist and antagonist fashion, which is a little bit complicated. Um, but essentially, the way a lot of psychotics, antipsychotics work is that you need um, to sort of get your levels correct. Um, and what I mean by levels correct is think of a stereo system where you want to kind of like turn up the volume, turn down the bass, turn up the treble, um, sort of um, work with these uh, sort of like subtle um, modifications to get the right cocktail that works just for you. And so a lot of um, antipsychotics like aripiprazole will touch certain receptors um, to kind of have this global effect of, of, of positive efficacy, ideally. Whereas other antipsychotics, like the typical antipsychotics, may hit a receptor really hard and get the effect that you want, but it can do what's called snowing you, where it can just totally knock you out, which is what Haldol does. So aripiprazole is sort of a, a more of a scalpel, softer touch to treating antipsychotics, which is why it's used not only in things like schizophrenia, which is a pretty intense mental condition, but also like things like bipolar disorder. So it has this activating character and actually works on negative symptoms. So it's a more um, refined and subtle approach or more of a um, nuanced approach to treating the disease, which is why it's a good molecule. So getting back to the... Um, long-acting injectable sort of block of ice metaphor that I mentioned. Um, getting a long-acting injectable to work is a little bit tricky because its properties don't lend itself to working right away. So when you stick um, the, when you inject Aristata at first, the mo because the molecules are locked in this block of ice that slowly melts, you're not gonna get efficacy on day one. And it actually takes a while for the for the molecules to finally get processed by your body and get released into your system now on the back end it works really well and it we you know at that at, at, at once you're, once those molecules are dissolved and you're talking about repeated injections you can have a very stable um, therapeutic levels blood levels of the aripiprazole molecule which you want because schizophrenic patients are notoriously non-compliant they can sort of fall off the face of the earth um, and you won't hear from them for weeks or months at a time and having medicine in the body that will work for weeks or even months is really valuable. But the challenge is it's hard to finally get up to that steady state level. It takes time to get there. It doesn't happen on day one, unfortunately. And so um, the metaphor that I like to use in terms of achieving this steady state is imagine you have a giant sphere, like a giant concrete um, stone sphere that you're trying to get rolling. And if you're pushing it, uh, pushing that giant sphere, it may be difficult to finally get it to, f you know, get over its own inertia and get spinning and get rolling. But once it's rolling, it'll roll forever, or at least it'll roll for a long time. And that's kind of what a long-acting injectable is. Now, an oral that you can take every day is like a marble, real small. You can sort of like flick it to get it moving, but it's not going to roll for very far. And you kind of have to keep flicking it over and over and over. And that's why you have to take oral pills over and over and over because you get this spike in blood levels the day that you take it, but then they sort of disappear just as fast. Whereas that aripiprazole aroxyl, that long acting tail gives it this um, insoluble nature that slowly um, gets moving. But once it's moving, it actually does a really good job of staying um, in solution. And especially with, you know, obviously with repeated injections. And so the reason why I make such a stink about this um, is that it makes the initiation of the drug somewhat tricky. Uh, because what actually happens with Aristata is you get the injection, but when the drug was first approved in 2015, the way that it worked at the time was that you had to take 21 days of oral supplementation before um, the real uh, thrust of the long-acting injectable did anything. So you got that shot, but you had to actually take 21 pills at first to kind of get you to the appropriate blood level so that you were covered efficacy-wise before the long-acting injectable finally kicked in. 
And since then, they've actually come up with a faster acting injectable called Aristata Initio that they have. And, they, and, they, and they, that was approved a couple of years ago. Um, and they give you that shot at first, on, in addition to the Aristata shot, to kind of get your blood levels um, up to snuff as fast as possible to get that giant boulder moving faster. But invariably, and it's not just the case with Aristata, other long acting injectables have this property too. It's just hard to get to that first plateau, to get to that, that, that um, steady state plateau for those blood levels of aeropiprazole to be doing their thing. Um, and you sort of are vulnerable in that initial stage. So that's a challenge, not only for Aristata, but for other long acting injectables. Um, and it kind of is what it is. But what I found to be really interesting about Aristata um, is what happens on the back end. So what I should say is that because aeropiprazole is already an approved marketed product and Aristata is essentially a long acting biosimilar, the investigation for this drug wasn't, um, the bar was somewhat lower. And so when they did their phase three trial for Aristata, they did it in a 12 week trial and they had a primary endpoint at 85 days, which is a pretty short amount of time. 85 days is not that long. Um, whereas most phase three trials will be in the order of you know months or even years long. So, but because aripiprazole was already a known entity, all Alchemies needed to do, and other companies that have long acting injectables um, have done this too, is show that it will work um, in a relatively compressed timetable to just show that your technology does its thing. And um, the FDA accepted that as an, as, as, a, as an efficacy point and approved the drug. But what's interesting is that what I mentioned, to get that big ball rolling takes time. And if you look at the label, and uh, you actually don't achieve steady state levels of this drug until the fourth injection. So the, the, at the time, they were only injecting once a month. So it takes four months to get this drug to finally reach stable therapeutic levels, to finally get that giant boulder rolling in your bloodstream. And then after that, you're good, because as long as you keep getting injections. But it takes four months. But four months is longer than 85 days. So the reason why I think that this drug is really interesting is that it hit its efficacy endpoint at 85 days. But it actually, at 85 days, you, the patients didn't actually even have steady state levels of Aristata yet. They needed another month to finally achieve steady state. And so what's interesting is that this drug likely will perform better in the real world than it did in the phase three trial. And that never happens. Normally what happens in a phase three trial is you have a very curated population that is chosen specifically to show an effect on a drug and you sort of capture that effect. And then once it gets into the real world, uh, you know, all sorts of things can happen. Whereas in this situation, they had a very short trial. They just needed to show that it, could, that it did its thing and that the aeropiprazole molecule was working. But because it's a long acting injectable and it takes so long for it to finally operate um, in, the, in, the, in the bloodstream, uh, it may actually perform better and last longer than uh, how it was initially investigated. And so having had the privilege to work alongside this molecule in my professional life, I've heard from, some, from psychiatrists who really sing its praises that it actually is a really long lasting and effective molecule that can really hold up um, whereas other ones might not do so as, as effectively. And that lends itself to the properties of its long acting nature. And so while it does have this hang up of trying to get off the ground early on, if you're patient, it can actually get up and running and last a considerable amount of time and actually from an efficacy standpoint, exceed expectations. And as I mentioned earlier, what's really nice about aripiprazole is that it doesn't have that you know, sort of acute like knock the patient out entity that you want, like somebody's tearing up the place because they're you know experiencing a schizophrenia episode. So maybe you know they're not, this is not the drug that's going to sort of like inoculate them and knock them out you know right then and there and sort of sort of sedate them. But in reality, if you're like a functioning person with schizophrenia who just wants to lead a normal life, if you can overcome this initial activate uh, this initial onboarding of the drug and get levels stable in your system. You can take Aristata every four weeks, you can take it six weeks, you can take it even eight weeks, depending on the dose that you that is worked out, and can have coverage in a very sustained way. And compliance is a huge deal for schizophrenia patients and their ability to sort of maintain functionality and um, achieve success on their treatments um, as, as one would hope, you have to take the drug. And that's why long acting injectables are so uh, effective. And you know, people can get hangups about in, in needles or 
and such, or the, the, the sort of the long half-life, the overcoming that initial um, achieving those therapeutic levels. But if you're patient enough and can sit through it and can kind of get up to that, those stable therapeutic levels, you actually can potentially have really strong and effective outcomes, which this patient demographic really needs um, because schizophrenia is a really challenging and taboo space um, that needs good drugs. And so that's essentially what I wanted to talk about. I think that um, Aristata is just a really interesting find, um, and it is innovative in ways that matter to patients, which is sort of what Alchemy's bread and butter is. Um, they are they have another drug called ALKS 3831 that they're trying um, for bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, and it is also took, taking something that already exists called olanzapine, which is a really potent antipsychotic that does a really good job, but it causes weight gain. And it's that's sort of a, that's been a hang up for it since it was first um, uh, approved back in 2002, I want to say, Zyprexa. But um, similar to this Laroxyl tail, they're adding what's called Samodorphin to it, which is an opioid antagonist um, that actually is intended to blunt your reward pathway. So to kind of prevent you from seeking and sort of overeating, which happens on um, Zyprexa. Uh, so. Alchemy's is a very opportunistic organization that can kind of looks looks for value in places that maybe other folks are overlooking and uses that technology backbone that sort of is what started the company, you know, over you know 30 years ago and such. And so it's a good drug, and that's why I wanted to focus on it. And if you're interested in more good drugs, feel free to subscribe to my channel and stay safe out there.